they were just powdering it up. Well, I well, listen, I can't really talk because all I do is just I'm throwing dry shampoo up in my hair before I not wash it. But I don't think my I don't put lard in it. No lard is in my hair. Uh, you'd be surprised at the ingredients in a lot of hair products, Colleen. Aloe true, I could that's post true. soap is made from tallow, which is animal fat. That's true. But my dry shampoo doesn't have lard. I know that. Probably not. Most dry shampoo is not fat based. <laughs> so <laughs> for um, sure. And if you think of it today, like powdered wigs were really a big tradition in England. Like, like you look at their parliament now, still wear them when they're in session. Like, um, and then when the when the army, like the British army during the Revolutionary War, like they were wearing wigs during the Yes. But now we look at pictures of George Washington, he wasn't wearing a wig. That was the, his hair. Of, that was his hair that he powdered up and dolled up like a wig. Like and he would have to wear like a fishnet thing over top of it at night to keep it in place. And he used lard and stuff to style his, his little curls there. But a lot of people in after the war wanted to like separate themselves from the British and what it looked like there. So they were they stopped. No one was wearing wigs here. That's why that tradition never carried on like it has in England where the parliament still are wearing the, you know, the wigs and the big robes and such. But that's the story of how disgusting people were with their hair in the <laughs> 17th century. So gross. So while we were fighting for our freedom, people in England and France were putting lard in their hair and puffing it up in a bathroom and wearing bird cages and having rats and stew on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hysterical. Funny. If we think about like these trends that they had, like, and there's so many different things that I just, I when I'm reading and like researching for something new, I find so many things. I'm like, oh, I can't wait. Oh, I gotta do that one. Oh, I gotta do that one. Oh, I want to do this one. There's so many. I know. There's so many. Bizarre historical things. And it's it's like, and I say this, I think I said this last time, like, in like a hundred years, people are going to thinking back to what we're doing right now. And like, like, what are they stupid? Oh my God, they're ridiculous. Oh, they're so stupid. Like something we're doing now is disgusting and gross. We just don't know it yet. <laughs> right. They use dry shampoo. Why would they just wash their hair? I know. Yeah. So. Uh, it's interesting, and I love I love stuff like this because it's funny and no one's dead in this one. So <laughs> yes, this is nice. So it's, it's a feel good, gross one, and not. <laughs> I though I bet you those people that had syphilis did die. <laughs> oh yes, they did. They did. Uh, but it's really I didn't realize that syphilis. I knew it was an issue, but I didn't know it affected more people than the plague because the plague wiped out half the population. That's about this, you know, like, that's not too long after, you're talking, what, was the 17th century? Yeah. You're talking about Roanoke, that was 1600s, 17th century. Yeah. And that's what the, they were colonizing there for the uh, the sarsaparilla route for the, right. to treat the syphilis, so it's the same time frame. Yeah. You should go back and listen to our oldest uh, unsolved case in America, because it talks about that there, that's too. Right. You'll learn about it yeah. there, too. A little bit. And you learn about how, I mean, you could learn if you wanted to Google it. We haven't talked about it, but Columbus gave syphilis to the Native Americans, the yes. indigenous people. Well, he caught it from what, like, he, he's the one a who. sheep uh, or something. Yeah, he, he was dirty. He was gross. Like, he kept sheep, sheep on a ship so he could <sighs> have relations with them. Ew. Why we have a day for him, I don't know. I figured it out. I haven't either. Don't get it. We need to stop that. I like the day <laughs> off, but I don't think it needs to I be. I mean, I'll take the day off. I'm not going to go to work, but <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I'm not celebrating him. He's a weird, nope. gross, nasty man. <laughs> Yuck. Who just brought nothing but badness with him. Death and disease. Death and disease. That's what he did. Just kind of ruined people's Good. lives. Good. So, uh, if you want to catch all our terrible trends episodes they come out on thursday for the most part you know everyone's all life in the way and comes out on friday but you know here we are it's coming out on thursday today this week and we're happy about it but if you follow us on your platform you'll get notifications you should follow us on facebook and twit no tiktok and <laughs> instagram <laughs> and we're on youtube also you can't see us but you sure can hear us and if you'd like to uh, send us a message, you can reach us at our email account, which is thecousinsweird at gmail.com. Please send us emails. You can request us to research something for you or just hit us up with a funny story you have or a spooky yeah. story. Or if, like you, 
participated in a terrible trend in your lifetime. What was it? I want to know. Yeah, <laughs> let us know. Um, in the description, you're going to find our link tree and everything in there that you want to. If you want to follow us on anything, you can get do it in there, and it's perfect and wonderful. And also, make sure if you are on Facebook that you like us because if we get to 500 followers on Facebook, which we're trying to build up our social media presence, um, we're going to do a giveaway. So yes, we are. I'm not sure what our number is now, but we're getting close. So make sure you like us on the Facebook and the Instagram. I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you uh, on Monday. Stay freaky. Bye. Bye.